Alright, time to free the other two thieves, starting with, uh, well, the second one. This is actually one of the bigger missions in the entire game. Uh, there are a lot to do. Involves both Murray and Sly. Is this the third to last, or second to last part? We're almost at the end, Leaves. The next part is the proper ending, and the, um, the last one is the, um, the extras. You know, I think I figured out the perfect metaphor for this game. Okay. It's like, okay, imagine you have a cheeseburger, and the burger itself, you know, the main meat part of it, is technically fine. It's not the most delicious thing ever, but it's fine. The, the the meat in this case is the gameplay. <laughs> then imagine everything else, well, okay, and let's imagine the cheese is fine, the cheese being some of the ideas of this game and, you know, some of the visuals. Then imagine everything else is either stale or just Oops. terrible, and that is essentially this game, essentially. Uh, Aha, he pinched his nose. It is all the trap works, so. My main point is like, well, whereas the gameplay and some of the ideas of this game are fine, not the best, but fine, everything else in this game is like, well, it's like if everything else in the cheeseburger sucked or was stale. Like I've mentioned, the story sucks. We're at pretty much bad fanfiction territory as of World 4. A lot of the mini games aren't as great as they were before. Uh, with the sole exception being the grid-like one, like, that one's pretty good. And, you know, the Rambo stuff is fine, but I'm sorry, the Six Axis stuff really drags it down. And even still... Uh, so, 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 it's, also, it's also a good segue, but first let me actually tell how the level has to go. Um, as the cutscene basically showcased, uh, Sly and Murray are trapped on two different sides of um, a particular type of narrow path, meaning that one has to help the other progress. Sly will have to deactivate some particular traps in order for Murray to progress, and then Murray on his own will have to raise some platforms that Sly will have to use, and you alternate back and forth between the two. It's actually pretty neat in how it's, uh, it's handled, but uh, go on, Jova. But I'll also yeah. mention six axes later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the six axis and everything. No, no, it's, it's about something else that I forgot, but uh, go on, Jova. Like I said, and, and and like I've gone on to say, I would argue that the gameplay in this is still the weakest of the games, but I will relent that the main gameplay is uh, fine for the most part. But unfortunately, that being just fine was not enough to save the whole thing. Like, again, I'd say, okay, even back then, and definitely as of now, we're in a timeline where, well, being a good game does not just mean simply fine gameplay. We want really great gameplay, but also a good narrative, good lore, and, well, for every other aspect to be good. I'm not to say that, that, not to say that it was never like that before, but, you know, in older generations like the sixth generation of gaming, you could definitely tell that, well, the priorities were more so just making the games look as high-tech as possible and having stellar gameplay here. And look, that's not to say that Crash Bandicoot has had bad narratives, but it's kind of obvious that the focus was more so on the gameplay than with the stories with the Naughty Dog games. Again, not to say they were bad narratives, they just, you know, obviously weren't their top focus. But by the time of mm -hmm. the, the but but by the time of stuff like the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox, there was definitely a need to have a good narrative to help out with stuff. Like, heck, sometimes people do play a game more so for the narrative here. And as we mentioned, with a lot of mascot platformers, a lot of their personality comes in having the good overlay, the good story, and whatnot. So again. When you have That's a slide why, game yeah. with just fine gameplay, it's fine, but if you muck up everything else, then, well, might as well just get a different game that plays like Sly that doesn't have a narrative that makes people... Which, uh, like I, I mentioned got... a couple of parts ago, there is none. Uh, I got my own analogy, actually. Actually, Luis, let me mention first, uh, because it's, it's something tied... Yes, Luis, because it's something tied to something that you asked a couple of parts ago. You did ask if Sucker Punch actually did handle the six axes for their infamous games. 
And I forgot that the second song does it. Specifically, <laughs> you have to hold the second PS4, it's not six Well, it's still part of a series, believe, and it's done by Sucker Punch, so it counts. But uh, it's, you have to hold the, the controller like you're supposed to, because it's used for tagging. So you're basically yeah, you use it to, as a spray can. Yeah. yeah, you have to hold it vertically in a very awkward manner, especially if you have it connected via the cable. Um, and then you have to shake it like you're fucking masturbating it. <laughs> it's so awkward. Yeah, it's a spray can. I, well, I, look, I get it. Initial release, initial release title for the PS4 have to, you know, advertise the gimmicks and all, but it was so awkward. Yeah. Like, um, anyway, like, as I was going to say, I've got my, uh, got my own analogy about this game. It's like, um, you know how a, how Sucker Punch... It's like, if, it's like in the past, Sucker Punch used to make you know, a really good-looking birthday cake. Uh -huh. sure, there's a little, sure there's a few imperfections when you eat it, like maybe they didn't put in enough uh, sugar, maybe just a little bit too less sugar or flour. But um, but overall, it's um, it's a per it's a perfectly fine and good tasting cake. Mm -hmm. Now imagine um, they leave the uh, they leave the uh, kitchen and Sanzaru take over. They mm -hmm. uh, they follow the recipe to a T. They've got the uh, yeah. They got the the cake looks good and um, and for the most part it tastes fine, exactly like how um, the cake was previously made. Unfortunately, yes. they um, now but they decide to add a few of their own different ingredients to try and shake things up a bit. And some of it works out fine, but other bits just kind of ruin it. And then. And then to top it all off, for some reason, they decide to put a stone then, in the middle of every slice. And, and, then, yeah. and, then, the rest, and, and then as a result, the restaurant loses one star. <laughs> and then... Um, yeah. Well, Market loses um, two, well. and then has that big slump in the middle. The slump being, you know, uh, we already covered that in this game. And also... Jonah, Jonah actually, sorry, go ahead, finish. And, and, also, and, and, also, and also, one part of the cake, one part of the cake really could could have done with some flavor, which was a good idea from the part of the chef, but he just puts the wrong flavor on. <laughs> You're saying, Pedro? I'm, I'm pretty sure you can guess what I'm referring to. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, Java reminded me that I actually haven't talked about my thoughts on the art direction. Like, uh, you can tell that this is definitely a game with a different art director than the previous three games. Mm -hmm. Because uh, while I do think the game looks fine, the cell, I, the, the, the cell shaded look is a um, is a, a very understandable approach to take, considering the, the game's uh, cartoony look. However, I don't know. Like I, I feel like it, it, it didn't. The series PS3 jump in wasn't quite as successful as Tools of Destruction. Let me put it like this: um, it's were, they, like... were they were they worried that were they worried about? Um... The PS2 style not looking good on PS3. It's not so much that, uh, Dwebs. It's more so the fact that the game looks technically better than the PS2 games because the models and textures are higher poly. But the overall art direction still feels PS2-ish, whereas Tools of Destruction genuinely felt like a leap forward. But, um... Well, to keep PS2 in mind games. that in order to achieve that, they had to sacrifice the performance, which in, instead in this case, True, sure, yeah. it does chug in some places, but at least they strive to maintain the 60 FPS. It's funny sure, you sure, mention sure. them thinking that the designs may not look good on the PS3 dudes, because ironically enough, well, when the remaster came to PS3, people still liked the way that game looks, so... I don't think fans would have really minded well, something okay. more consistent the look, the look, with it. The, I forgot if I did mention, but the look on the, the old the original trilogy, even on the PS3, is fine. The major problem is that the things they were like simple models. The actual like go, mouth guy. movements, in general the movements is a bit janky, but the actual mouth movements where the characters have to talk feel so pop. Ask where in the well, for example, in this game, it manages to be a bit more refined. So, I'll... like, just just putting a one to one would have probably still not worked. We probably had to do some refining. Oh, this is not a, one to one, one like I said, just upscale the original models essentially and make it so that the mouth movements wouldn't be so. It's also it's also a problem of uh, potential minor copyrights uh, if the if the artist who worked on the free games. 
doesn't want to do anything with the new one. You know, they basically cannot do anything. Oh, I get that, I get that. Oh, the point is more so that the arts down here feels like such a weird departure, and for I, no I good reason. Think I, idea. I, actually think, I actually think I can come up with a reason. I, I get the feeling the art director was trying to use the cell shading to properly try to make the models, try to represent at best the, art, the artwork, aka the drawings we see in the animated cutscenes. Uh, however, in order to achieve that, he should have done something I can to what level 5 does. Go f go full on with the cell shading, go full cell shaded, like, whereas this cell shading feels a bit... I don't want to say half-assed, that's not the right word. Nice of you to join us. Why, are you and Murray all right? Something knocked out communication! Yeah, because we are too deep uh, in the caves. Sort of, it's a long story. But are you seeing what I'm seeing? Wow! It's amazing, isn't it? It sure is. I can't wait to do that. You can't touch it. Oh. Wait, what? Sorry, Sly. If you touch anything, you're going to alert the guard. Yep, this is a proper stealth section where you have to be careful where we watch your step. Mm -hmm. And don't forget a classic trap in a lot of these sort of tales. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But uh, anyway, but, uh, yeah. Pedro, Pedro just reminded me of something because. Uh, and because irony is a thing, it seems that very, these recent times, uh, all the games we were recording, like right in the middle, happened to be something uh, like a news related to it, that uh, recon kind of recontextualizes most of what we've seen. Because guess what? Apparently, there was um, a presentation, a, t a, pre a presentation of the game, an old one, an old build, that got leaked recently Wait, and gives us serious? a bit of information. Uh, yes, I'm actually reading games rather article. I will also link it in the description because why not? Oh my god, Tio, um, it's just like with our Final Fantasy playthrough. Like, seriously, every time we do a playthrough, something seems to pop up related to the game. Not just that, Jova, even was. with Castlevania is happening. In apparent, and keep in mind, we haven't even said it yet, but even for Mortal Kombat Deception to an extent, Jova. But oh uh, anyway, let me get let me get this. Um, the title for the presentation refers to the project. The old title was supposed to be Slay Cooper, The Thief Net. <laughs> And it looked like the developer Sansor wanted to have more focus on social features, with 50% of the game being a single player experience, 30% of social gameplay, kind of like what the Second Son did with one of his particular side quests, um, and 20% was for decorating the hideout. There also were some videos in the presentation with some features that didn't make it in the final product. Product A hazard room feature would have allowed players to create a room that others could attempt to break into and steal from them. Uh, or the other way around. This mode incorporated PlayStation Network social tools to let the player know if someone had attempted to break in while uh, they were away from the game. A monster truck minigame is shown now where the player will play as Murray to be able to control the truck through tilting the PS Vita and using the touchscreen on the back of the device to accelerate and decelerate. Motion controls were also shown to be used for hacking, safe cracking, and binocular comms. QR code were to be used and Codes were planned to be scattered on marketing websites and other game award systems. <laughs> Scanning these will let you have uh, uh, within game uh, be awarded within game elements or instant downloads. The studio wanted to make these rare seasonal items. So basically, it kind of was a proto. They wanted to have a prototype of a typical games as a service with uh, you know periodical events of it will have a lot of cosmetics and stuff so is this there was the also video be... you saw or is this from like um a there is document? a video but i'm mostly reading the games rather article that recaps a bit what happening oh anyway let me mention this there was also a co-op dlc that would have introduced additional missions for two player and also there's a mention of a quote-unquote scooby-doo style parody level at a count dracula castle and as one level the players would have to be stolen were to have stolen from the creature there. Um, but the more interesting thing also is that uh, it contains uh, also the sales figure of the franchise. Um, the game total budget apparently for freezing time is 9 million, which is not much when you get out to it, uh, with the expectation to break even with the 413k units. Uh, which is not much, so if I, if I had to do the math correctly, it did actually did reach that line. Wait, wait, least. wait, hold on. If it did reach that, though, wouldn't they have authorized a sequel then? Well, we're, that's not the first time where, you know, despite good sales, not much more happens, Jova. Well, um, oh, okay, we, okay, okay. But I guess hold on, my... let me, oh, sorry, go on. Let me mention, the sales figure of a previous game, and the first game having a million, a hundred... 
mean one point sorry a million 169 164 169,164 sales the second game had slightly less than a million and the third in the series had 722,000 something it also noted that the worldwide net contribution was 28 million so the third game didn't sell that much actually i'm actually very surprised um and apparently also there's some even minor stuff tied to so other Sony's expectation. Apparently, according to Sony, um, the best, uh, the sorry, the third, uh, the number one first-party title that sold the most on the PSP was actually da the Dexter solo game. I'm actually surprised about that. Mm -hmm. And it was also the third best-selling PSP title overall. If I remember correctly, Dexter was made by uh, Radiaton, right? Yeah, the same. Yeah. The same also did, I think, also uh, new, the New Frontier. So how did um, this stuff get leaked anyway? Was it? Uh, oh, was it? Don't don't tell me it was connected to that ever so wonderful case of leakage that is the no, Epic it's versus not, it's Apple not the trial. Court case. It, I, apparently, just it's very just show up, showed up. Um, because it was originally, apparently, supposedly it was originally posted by a user called Tabriz Siddique on YouTube and then found its way to Reddit. That's so, there is a, there is also a video, again, I will put a link to the article which also contains the video in the description, why not? But anyway, Everything. thanks also thanks also to that stunt, we're also able, thanks able to finally reach the FIP. Don't worry, Murray will actually get, um, get saved in between missions. Hey, continuity! Um, <laughs> but we're about to get another hacking minigame, so go ahead, Pedro, say what you wanted. Um, well, listen, remember, Jova, everything, literally everything, is is potentially uh, available for leaking. Let's not forget how we now have the source code to Super Mario 64, which allows for all the fans. Also, the, proto the, pro the prototype for the Sony games and the the, yes. the the first build of the Castlevania Dreamcast game that got cancelled. Oh, true, 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 true. true. Yeah, and, and I was just wondering. Somebody this... got a hold of Panel the Pond 64, aka okay, the game that got cancelled and then was made into Pokemon Puzzle League. So. <laughs> Oh, I do get that um, anything is possible to leak. I was just wondering what were the specific circumstances for this particular leak. But uh, anyway, Tia, regarding, regarding the price and the sales thing, again, now granted, maybe we can assume that this game did reach the sales mark, but we apparently don't have any solid numbers, so for all we know, the reason... Oh, okay, so let me, I actually didn't check. Let me see if actually the, the Wikipedia article does uh, report it. Honestly, I would only be okay with Sansara making another game if they fire the writer of this one. Again, Pedro. Definitely. First of all, we still don't know who, who that person is. But second, um, here's the thing. We, again, even if we wanted, uh, even if we wanted, it wouldn't be possible because, again, we've been bought by Facebook. So the problem oh, doesn't exist right. in the first place. Oh, oh I, I get that. I'm just, I'm just making an hypothetical statement. I guess he's referring um, to, you know, back when Sansari was still yeah, in a position back to when. make... Back when, so yes, thought... because uh, because to be per because to be perfectly honest, uh, yeah, this uh, th this, uh, this this was kind of uh, yeah, like uh, what Jova was saying earlier. But the point is, back to what I was saying. No, okay, let me put it this way. Uh, I think the best term I can use for what I was saying is undercooked. I feel like if they went for if they did something akin to what we've seen in games like you know Kuni 2 or Genshin Impact or. Um, or oh, you play Genshin example. Impact? Oh, didn't you remember? It was there on my uh, XMB on the PS5 on our Stranger Paradise video. You, you even told me before uh, before we started recording. Oh, true, um, yeah. But I didn't know that, um, you know, you actually played it. I thought it was just one of those typical... Oh, oh, Java, 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 I'm Portuguese. And our stereotype is that we'll try anything if it's for free. So... David, who are you? Relax, pal. I'm a friend of Salim's. Oh, Salim. Did he give you anything for me? Like all the money he owes me for betting on the camel races? Uh, sorry. You'll have to take that up with him. I most certainly will. Well, at least it took it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I will need to uh, hold, yeah, hold on for a second, Pedro, because we're transitioning sure, to sure. the next mission and I need to actually explain <laughs> it because it's another thing that's kind of. Oh, sure, sure, okay. go ahead. It's a bit too baffling, but it's something that I noticed only like with hindsight. Uh, 
again, we're almost at the end of the game, folks. And uh, the, the next thief has to be freed by Salim and Zlai going through a particular like obstacle course, which has turrets, meaning that Bentley has to do something in order to mask their presence. Mm -hmm. So, what are you thinking, Bentley? Mm -hmm. I think we need to use some mirrors. Uh, minus the mirrors. Meaning... The only mission in the entire game where you use the RC chopper, and it's it's just for blo for bombing for using smoke bombs. Now you know. Like, normally we would have had Penelope do these, but it's not, well, you know. forget even Penelope because Bentley did use that in the second game. It's not even that big of an issue. But again, it's the only time you use it. Like it it feels so weird, and it. it basically contributes to believe that this final part of the game was rushed because it's literally just the only time you use it. This is sort of what I meant when I mentioned earlier how the gameplay balances feel off in this game. Again, I'm not going to act like all the previous slide games were perfect in how they balanced how often you played as each gameplay style, but this game is definitely the most egregious to the point where literally a gameplay style only shows up for one single mission. Let's face but, it. Uh... But it's, that's the thing, Jova. It's re literally just the only case for this one because stuff like, say, the RC car got enough coverage and had new tools for you to, to experiment with, you know. Uh, Same goes for other types of, you know, mini games. And the third, and the series, the, the original trilogy also was not as strange for having um, some gameplay styles that were only specific to one mission only. You know, I feel like, like say, they using were better the crane in the third game with I the Australia like, mission. I feel like they were better contextualized though in the previous games though, whereas this one feels so out of place like you mentioned. Like, okay, for example, the boss fight against the pirate parrot in Sly 3 where you're playing as Penelope. Different gameplay style, but one that flows well enough into it and makes sense. This, I mean, we could have arguably have solved this by doing something else anyway, so... It kind of feels like padding more than anything. Yeah. Any, anyway, another That's... thing that I mentioned that I found in the meantime, Jovak, just quickly to mention. Um, and it comes to sale, the only thing that he's mentioning was the fact that the game was the ninth best selling retail game in the month it was released in the United States. I don't know how much that actually means. But mm. uh, uh, remember what I mentioned about the tweet about Sucker Punch actually approving uh, the game and. Uh, uh, you know, and giving their blessings uh, that we thought, oh, well, maybe yeah. it was just the early version of this game. No, it's uh, from February the February 5th itself, uh, and we mentioned no problem ending over the slide reigns to Santaru. Hope all enjoyed it as much as we did. I'm so no, they, ac they actually did see the final product. I'm gonna chalk that yes. up to being a PR oh, yeah. response, but oh, okay, you know what? And to be fair, even if it's not just a PR response, it wouldn't be the first time that the original creator of a series has okayed some pretty stupid, stupid things. Not to mention, it is, don't get me wrong, it's possible that he genuinely liked this, it's just that it can be also possible that he didn't want to throw a, a sensor under the bus, because, you know, developers uh, saw the already and, and yeah. all that stuff. Well, like I said, the problem with PR responses is that there's a lot of legal, there's a lot of legal red the tape only, involved in them. Like, the only time I've seen that averted was Event of the Dragonfly, when Insomniac just came out and said, this game sucks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. And, um, and it was even and, wow. and it was it was even more so because because the you know, Ted Price said um, said people were bashing us because they thought we made the game. That's the thing, Dwebs. The Ted Price is a very outspoken individual, sometimes a bit too much. Unfortunately, um, well, keep in mind. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, if um, if people were wrongly throwing shit at him, I think he deserves to be able to say okay, that it wasn't our fault. Oh, don't get me wrong, Yves. He was right there, but go ahead and finish too if you want something. It's not. Even, it's not even that. No, it's connected to what you just said. I remember what I also mentioned on the SSMB to you a while ago. Um, again, for a guy with that kind of attitude, he genuinely took the complaints that people had for Resistance to in stride. So that's actually really oh, interesting in how they behaved. I get. I get that too. Like, but at the same time, he said publicly on a stream. Hold on. Sesame. That outfit makes you a better thief, Sly, not a genie. Now, why don't you help me with this door? <laughs> Close.
sesame. That worked. So you got lucky. Sure. Hey, Dwibs, it's funny you mentioned uh, people being very outspoken about uh, how they view other creations. I recall <clears throat> Naughty Dog once described the Crash games under Radical Entertainment as, and I quote, like your daughter doing porn. Yeah, I, I saw that too. What? Yeah. Uh, yes, well, you're see. right. You're right. Naughty Dog were very outspoken about how they weren't too much a fan of how Crash was being treated in the they, radical era. They've era. seen some weird shit. That's about a they, 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 oh, Java, maybe that's where the maybe that's where the porn Crash f joke but, came from. Crash band is culture. Maybe. Crash yeah. culture. But that's the thing. That's rich coming from the people who actively wanted to kill the franchise with CTR. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very hypocritical of them, but I do admire their honesty in that regard. Sure, too. sure, sure. But, uh, but go um, on, Pedro. Go on. Uh, that's the thing, Dwebs. I don't want to go into a rant about this. I'll save that for when we start the Ratchet and Clank games. Uh, but uh, um, Ted Price also sometimes is a bit too outspoken for his own good because he has made it very clear publicly on a stream with a lot of fans watching that he regrets the PS2 era of Ratchet and Clank. Um, there's even a point where. Like, like he, he, he cringes at, at the humor of those games. Um, and even said on that stream when, when someone said to him, well, but, but the fans love it, though. And he really said, and I quote, maybe they just haven't grown up. Yeah, he said Ooh. that online, by the way. You can look it up. So, yeah, uh, Ted, oh, Ted, I mean... he, you should keep some, st even if you do, I don't know wrong, he's allowed to regret those games. I don't think they're that bad as he puts them, but he's, he's allowed to have his opinion on them. But Ted, you you should have kept that to yourself. I'll just say this: yeah, never, I mean, never trash your fans for that sort of stuff. Okay, okay. The only, the only times where you should trash your fans is if the fans are acting like shitheads. Mm-hmm. It's that. I think. In fact, I think it's the lack of that that caused all that shit with the fandom in regards to some parts of Last of Us Part Two, for example. Well, some, like, that's, uh, a, that's the thing. That some people will argue, even in that case, you should not do that. You should be try to be better than that. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Sometimes, you, sometimes you can only stay out of it too much because if it's because if if it starts if it starts to get too far, you should just you should try and step in and say. Not not to go far as to say you should grow up or anything. Just try and be diplomatic, like, like say, okay, we understand that fans have a lot of opinions regarding certain things about the game. That's absolutely fine. But what we won't stand for is stuff like homophobia and, 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 and stuff like that. Anyone that acts like that is not welcome. The mm -hmm, problem, sure. the uh, problem with Last of Us Two is that. Well, the people in charge of Last of Us 2 weren't going after the fans for the real bad stuff. They were going after them for petty stuff and trying to deny the obvious real horrors of, you know, employees getting abused within the company and whatnot. Yeah. With Sony just what um, happened. But, okay, let's not go it's too only, far off. It's not a lady that and drove up. People actually got promoted after that. But, uh, yeah, like yeah, you I said. Mean, why, do you, why do you think I spent a whole part mocking... Uh... But uh, but, Jova, but, Jova, yeah. but, Jova, but Jova is a point. Uh, but to to I mean, make it to make it more local to what Pedro just said it as well. Um, I, thanks to also these some of these redos that we've been doing recently. It's no secret that like I mentioned, I really don't like some of our older playthroughs. But if there are people that that actually do enjoy it, I'm actually fine with that. Sure, I oh, might sure. not agree. I might not. I might not agree with them, but I'm not gonna call them out because of that. Sure, so. of course. Like uh, it's, it's a similar, a similar, something similar happened uh, at the time of this recording. Johnny has recently posted his uh, Johnny versus Sonic One video. And yep. He says that he and he says that uh, oh, if you guys like those older reviews, that's fine. Um, I personally would rather have new versions that are better. Like a snake and could not break free. That was no nightmare, my friend. Salim. You are in my dream like too. You brought me many delicious snacks. What is with you guys and all the food? Salim, who is this insolent pup? Oh, don't worry about him. He is a friend who helped rescue you. In fact, he is my assistant. Assistant? <laughs> what are you talking about? Wah, wah. Play along. For the record, I think that I didn't mention the, the missions where you can rescue the thieves it can be done in any order you want. So there's no real matter of which each previous mission have you done. Yeah.
now I, I require your attention, Luis and Shirei, because, uh, like I mentioned uh, um, in the previous part, our villain of this episode is uh, a British person. Um, so, Bentley wants to bug her office and use a particular type of trickery, um, you know, to make sure the bug is planted correctly. Weirdly enough, Salim's OS doesn't have any weird changes unlike the other Ancestor Coopers. I, I really do wonder if Tia's right, and like by this last stuff, they were just rushing stuff. Though it's also the like like you yourself mentioned, Joe. It's also the shortest of the of the chapters. Uh, not even kidding. Uh, it's it goes really fast if you blink and you miss it. Uh, Going which, I, like they said, it really would have helped if these and chapter four were swapped in the first place. Uh, 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 because that's the weird thing. Apparently, from what I've read, Chapter 4 was supposed to be the Breaver level yeah, gameplay Yeah, yeah, you did mention it. Uh... But, oddly enough, I feel like, even still, gameplay-wise, Chapter 4 would have been better coming after this. Okay, and now... In a second... I require you, Dweebs and Shiro, to stand up for Peter McConnell graces up with a piano solo version of Hail Britannia. Oh, no. nice. That's your anthem. <laughs> you like that, that, was, uh, that, that, that was an unofficial one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, that's right. The is actual that, one is, is called Rule Britannia, it? isn't it? Is, is that why you don't like it, Shiro? No, no, no. no. We, we have God Save the Queen. Wales has... Um, Land of my father's. Yeah, we have our own anthem. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're fucking heathen. <laughs> <laughs> None of that English. Shit. But uh, yeah, Bentley, Bentley has a, <laughs> has a nefarious plan. Since uh, nice. since Miss Decibel the uh, prefers classic music, of course that automatically means she detests rock and roll. So Bentley oh, is gonna have, yes, Bentley's gonna have Salim rig the entire place with basically speakers, and Bentley then Bentley will bust up heavy metal for oh, the great. Floor, so. <laughs> because, because as we all, because as we all know, people only enjoy one of the each type of thing, obviously. But hold yeah, on, I mean, people only well, listen to one this, music genre. This is Batman well, Portrait yeah. Song level of well, basic okay. music. <laughs> okay, okay, to, to, to be fair, that is a common thing done with, um, in, you know, in stuff like pranks, for example, deliberately playing someone's least favorite kind of music for a laugh. That's and a in this mm -hmm. case, And in this case, I think using it as a way to annoy the villains so much that they can't concentrate properly and therefore give us the chance to um mm -hmm. take down their plan it isn't isn't so bad I, I, I swear i've seen it done before it's also for the fact that again uh, much like with the original trilogy the villains and in some of our characters have played more for uh, stereotypes, so not just their national one, but actual just stereotypes. So the one of a snooty person who prefers just classic music and the test <laughs> punk because it's a crime and the rage of a beast, <laughs> it's not too uncommon. You know what's funny yeah. though? She's British. If anything, a British stereotype is that all of the British are rock stars. No, like we, love, we love disco is what we like. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, a big thing there, Jova. The British music scene is actually a lot more varied than people believe. Yeah. But, uh, oh, but yeah, yeah Peter, yeah, you, you can actually you can finally go. Yeah, let me just finish my point on the graphics of this game. Like, uh, as you as you take uh, like the, if the if the idea behind the art director was to properly make the graphics of the game the models look just like the drawings, the actual artwork. The, okay, that's stuff we see in the animated scenes. I feel like they should, like, in that case, go fully embrace the shell shit aspect. Go do, do something akin to what you've seen in Okay Tuber for the Wild or Genshin Impact. Whereas the cell shitting in this game is the same kind of cell shitting you see in something like, um, I guess, I mean, uh, let me think of a different example. I, I guess something like what you see in, um, uh, in, in, like, in Dark Chronicle, because at the time, well, I haven't quite perfected it. But I'm trying to think of a different developer. That I think a better to... way to put it is like, well, for one thing, they were basing it off of the animation in the animated, well, the 2D animated cutscenes, which, oh, yeah. as we've already mentioned, those were some drastic changes to the characters. Like, okay, when you make a drastic change to a character in artwork, that can be jarring enough, but then you have to translate it to 3D, where stuff can get very, very uncanny. 
and I feel like mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the problems uh, began. It's that a lot of it just comes off as uncanny looking, like Sly's sure, lips, sure, Murray's uh, physique, even some of Bentley's oh. proportions seem a bit off when you render it into 3D. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, I'm not being. I'm. I'm, I'm not really rem trying to think oh! of a different, another game that you were not. Have. No, draw that is a thing I wasn't even supposed to go there. Go it's, 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 it's another. It's it's the fact that the cell shaded the cell shading in this game feels undercooked. It didn't feel like they, they should have gone full on to full advantage of that particular uh, uh, art technique. Whereas compared, this is something like what you see in Catherine and Persona Five, where Atlas is cell shading model completely perfectly capture um, the artwork uh, the, the manga artwork um, that you see on the covers of those games you know um, it's a perfect freedom translation same thing with the Nukumi games and Breath of the Wild and Genshin Impact and Ace Attorney Dual Destinies all right yeah. now Bentley himself will have to reach the locations of each of them of each of the transporters and uh, sorry the, the speakers and actually activate using these darts. However, um, this doubles as a stealth mission because the moment you like detonate something that's too close to Miss Decibel, the music stops entirely and she starts scouting the area. It's kind of like of a tone shift that's done to actually startle the player. <laughs> it's actually pretty neat you know, how it's done. But um, um, what but, I get, but I under. Sorry, go on, Jova. You first. I think, Pedro, the best way to sum up your thing is like, well, it's a combination of there being a drastic. <laughs> it's a combination of there being a drastic art change style with it also being a bad transition to the 3D models and whatnot. For example, the colors are not all. The, the colors are not exactly like in the in the, art, in the animated scenes, so it feels. Under, that's why I, I say it feels under, undercooked. Like, uh, Bentley's green in the animated scenes is a lighter green than what we see here. Mm. So, it's weird. Like, feels... Uh, again, the, the other okay. direction feels... Okay, I don't remember if I actually did the setting, but it could be entirely possible that I just, you know, put the, the, the contrast in the actual game, you know, in a bit different way. And you see if it's actually in the videos. Uh, well, I played this, the game myself back in the day, too. I, I do remember being like this. So I don't, th I don't mm. think there's... I mean, I'll have to play it again, I guess, on my own to detect any minor little contrast difference but i, and I get the and i also get I the idea but... I, I seriously doubt it makes it all that much of a difference what you whatever you did in the settings too i'd say it applies either way because even when we do get to see bentley's face you know when it's clearly lit up it still looks off honestly like look at this we can see it properly lit up but i'd still say it looks off Mm -hmm. Okay, again, coming from someone who did not really have problems uh, with the same thing that you did mention for, say, the Prince of Persia 2008 reboot, uh, I am not really seeing it is. So, like, sure, I guess it could have been better, it could, it could have actually had polished uh, and also be the environment, but I'm not sure that I see all these particular problems. Uh, like, um, this is also... Uh, Again, this is also helped by the fact that, uh, again, while the original models on the PS2 trilogy were actually fine for the time, and the PS3 version managed to make them uncompressed, and the physics on Zion's tail are still pretty interesting for the time we were made, um, because that that is not is not something that needs to be scoffed off like that. Um, it doesn't change the fact that they were, they were still, you know, janking how we moved, uh, you know, in order to reflect also a bit more the fact that it will, will resemble more of a comic book, while here it will, it wants to resemble more an actual animated show. You mm -hmm. could maybe but, argue that it's a bit subjective, but hear me out here, though. Whether or not we agree on it, the fact that we're this split on it does show that, well, when you make a drastic change like this, Oh boy, here are... we go. Oh. Mm -hmm. And now Peter McCollum gives us a, he a heavy rock version of the Sly's main theme. Enjoy. Feel the power of rock, bitch. Hmm. <laughs> it's most unorthodox. <laughs> Curses foiled again. <laughs> this, is, this is a guy. This is a, an old man uh, that thinks that everything in music went down, down the shitter after the fifties. Okay. <laughs> and now it's up to Salim. Actually, there you go. 
actually the place the the bug what means less evil is actually distracted it's basically it's totally one of those guys who back when the beatles first came on he was all like oh they're ruining music and shit bring back thanks sinatra did you just say there's a bug in the statue of my boyfriend yeah, and, be, and basically the mission to, just to, ends. To, to you don't even ever get away. To be fair, the music's so loud. But uh, but go ahead, Jova. Finish. Feel free to finish your point. This is part is over anyway. It's like it again goes back to our main gip about them clearly wanting to do something very drastically different, but maybe not to a wise degree. I would argue it would have been possible for them to do something that was more consistent with the original trilogy because the original trilogy for more or less the part, was consistent in its art look style here and there. I do get that maybe some things needed to be upgraded, but this feels like they were blatantly changed. It's sort of like going from Crash Bandicoot 3 to Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. It's like, um, man, that game did not age the best visually. Uh, actually, though, overall, I was going to say, uh, wasn't that game criticized for just being the other ones? <laughs> Well, well, Dwibs, I'm talking about the visuals. Uh, like, compare I mean, that to, say, something like Crash to Insanity. Like, Crash to Insanity also looked different, but Crash to Insanity, I would argue, is more something that feels in line with the original trilogy, looks and everything. And then you got the Radical Era, which just threw everything out the goddamn window in the except, visual department. Except in Tag Team. Except in Tag Team Racing, for the most part. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when people think Radical Era, they think, you know, the Titans games and all that, but... Yeah, yeah. well, well, well I, I believe in accuracy. <laughs> Let me just quickly try to explain what I meant to tell. Okay, let me put it this way, too. Let's see the thing, like you just all said, the PS2 trilogy's art direction overall for the in-game graphics was very much uh, neutral in terms of how they were made. Again, very much... Uh, uh, like a, how do I put this, like like a, like one of those smooth, like, Lupin style of dark colored comics. Uh, this one, on the other hand, again, it implements cell shading. However, okay, let me put you like this there. Imagine Bentley looking just as vibrantly colorful as he would if he if he was rendered by, by level 5 uh, cell shading. Like, uh, now that would be something that I would love to see. Like, I feel like uh, the cell shading in here feels undercooked. Like, if it could have gone full out and make the, the colors pop just like in the animated scenes. I mean, not, I'm not sure if they're supposed to do, though. Like yeah, remember, get, re it, go ahead. remember the entire tone of the, of a franchise is supposed to be a bunch of thieves who operate in the sh in uh, you know as much as they can like in the shadows uh, and have darker themes. So instead, not having super brightness uh, makes sense, but it's not like they're going instead for huge desaturation. I would agree with you if you were talking about the original trilogy, but the animated scenes in this game are decidedly a lot. There's a lot more color in the animated scenes. Well, it's it's sadly a tradition that I remember even in the original PS2 trilogy, elements in both, in both animation and the dimension and shape of objects in the uh, in the actual animated Java cutscenes did not reflected what was actually happening in the game. I guess. Well, mm. whatever. I mean, like clockwork, clockwork, like clockwork part can constantly sh change shape, size, and color all the time. Well, like, yeah. That's more of a proportions change, but they still look the same visually more so. Again, again, again. I'm not saying that it's inherently a bad idea, but I do feel like, you know, the drastic change is just, well, it's something that didn't help people transition into it well. And again, considering all the other problems we've mentioned with the game... That was just for another record, thing that probably was not doing it any favors. For the record, I don't think the game looks bad. I just, I, I just, I can tell it's a different art director. I can definitely tell because. But uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I get the feeling sucker. If this game was made by Sucker Punch, the art direction probably would have, uh, probably would have gone a different direction. Probably, I, I can't. I, obviously, obviously, that's a what if that we'll never be able to confirm. But I do get the feeling uh, Sucker Punch's art director would have done something different than what this game did. But, uh, but that's pretty much it. So stay tuned for the next part, which is the end of Chapter 5, and I stick Chapter 6 along it, meaning that it's the epic conclusion of, uh, of the series so far. You're probably yeah. not prepared, mm -hmm. so see ya there. See ya. See ya. See ya. And that's my cue for getting the booze.